Welcome back students to one more session of your Super 20 series. That is the last section, section C as well as section D of your uh, grade 12 CBSE sample paper. Right. So here when I take the Super 20 series, what actually is the speciality of this? So when I have to show you, just see this index. In this particular book, we have almost, you know, like 10 sample papers which are sold as well as you have 10 unsolved sample papers which are also there in the book. I think it is just uh, clear with you. After that they have also given sample paper 17 CBSC that's 2019 Delhi with solutions as well as they've also given here <laughs> sample paper 18 and uh, that is after uh, the 16th one all india 2019 with solutions as well as sample paper that is cbsc sample paper 1920 with the marking scheme and also they have included here with the sample paper mock test means the 20th paper is a mock test paper so wonderful isn't it so let me come back there are 10 solved sample papers there are one two three four five six unsolved sample papers for you to practice as well as answers also there along with that for answer basically then they have given you Delhi paper all India paper CBSC latest marking scheme paper also as well as the mock test paper right now let us start off with the section C and section D of your sample paper which is <coughs> released by your super 20 series right let me start off with this question right so when I have to see this particular question which section is this as I've told you this is section number that is a section C question number 28 to 34 right so whenever a question is given to you first thing you, you need to remember which section is it belonging to what is that that means here when it is section C we very well know all our three marks question students yes done we've already seen in the paper also what is it given let us see the instructions yes <coughs> section when I have to take yes see here yeah section the C is your three marks question let's start off now when I have to speak about this question what did they say they what did they ask me they've asked me which solution is used uh, for leaching of gold metal correct leaching of gold metal in the presence of air so <coughs> presence of air in the metallurgy of gold so they've asked what is the leaching agent used for gold metal basically whenever you speak about the concept of leaching I have done one video on the leaching concept I'll provide that link in the description box right students that link will be provided in the description box I'll mention the question number I'll also give you the link but for the examination point of view I have to write the answer so let us write <coughs> for leaching process there are different different leaching agents let me list out all the leaching agents which you have and then come back to the gold so basically in chemistry sodium hydroxide is one leaching agent I am giving the information of all the maximum leaching agents which you require for your board examinations wrote it spoons so sodium hydroxide is one leaching agent where am I going to use I am going to use for leaching of leaching of bauxite right so leaching of bauxite in which one in al in, in aluminium uh, preparation means aluminium processing isn't it so whenever bauxite is over of aluminium in aluminium extraction done next one more leaching agent <coughs> let me give you ammonia is one more sometimes this ammonia is used as a leaching agent for what for metals like copper <coughs> for leaching metals like nickel for leaching metals like cobalt right next thing now they've asked me the question for gold let me write specifically the answer for this is for leaching gold sodium cyanide or casein is used okay for sodium cyanide or casein are the leaching agents for gold so here as i told you the video for leaching process i've explained clearly please watch that so here there are other leaching agents also like calcium chloride sodium carbonate they are also used right <coughs> why these are used basically only one property which makes these agents use means why we are using this for metal metal extraction is first important property is the complexing abilities and in what are complexing abilities also as I do the video I'll explain you students so remember once again different leaching agents used for metallurgy one is sodium hydroxide for leaching of bauxite that is in aluminium extraction so bauxite is one next ammonia for copper nickel and cobalt isn't it an extra information for you all next for gold it is sodium cyanide or casein if they ask you other than these any other leaching agents you can write calcium chloride and sodium 
iron chloride if they ask you for what they are used you can write because of their complexity ability that is the main thing right so let me come back and do the next question which is there i have some space let me read this question okay right so here Right, students. I think ah, okay. This is the question. Let me take this. Yes. So, what did they ask me? Out of C and CO, which is a better reducing agent? They've asked me, which is a better reducing agent. For what it is a reducing agent? Basically, they've asked me better reducing agent for at lower temperatures. This is the point which I have to remember. Lower temperature is that concept which will explain we means graphically when we do it, <coughs> when we do a graph between delta G naught and T. So that is the concept where lower temperature. A higher temperature which will be observing for extraction of iron from its iron oxide okay first important thing again i'm telling students i have done this video i'll be giving a link video link below in the description box so watch that video where i have done the graphical representation done but for the examination point of view i have to write first answer here is among c and co CO is a better reducing agent. <coughs> okay, CO is a better reducing agent. Is a better small o yes carbon and this and cobalt better reducing agent. Why it is better reducing agent? As I told you, watch the video. You will be having the video link for the graph which I have given. Right here, how you have got this conclusion? We let us write an examination point of view. So basically, we have we have drawn a graph which is having delta G naught standard Gibbs free energy versus temperature. In this graph, what happened here? <coughs> Gibbs free energy for carbon carbon dioxide, right? It's very much less than the Gibbs free standard Gibbs free energy. The change in Gibbs free energy between Fe and FeO. This is the main reason. This is where it lies the whole concept, because the uh, change in free energy. <coughs> is lesser than iron and iron oxide conversion of that that's why i'm going to use co for reducing this this is the main concept right right so hence co is used or co will reduce will reduce where which one it is going to reduce yeah it's going to reduce feo this is the main concept and during this process what will happen the co will reduce feo as shown in the graph and it itself what will happen to it it itself gets oxidized it itself gets oxidized in which one it gets oxidized? Oxidized is nothing but addition of oxygen, right? It becomes carbon dioxide, right? Let me draw a line. So, students, for better understanding, please watch the video which link which I have given you, right? So, this is the answer. This is the key word which you need to write in the exam so that your complete this one, what do you say, uh, answer or the full whatever marks allotted to this is perfectly given so first keyword is co is a better reducing agent this you need to write then according to the graph this is the graph nothing to draw with the graph you need to explain when i take this particular graph we have observed that the change in the gibbs free energy is lesser than this that's the reason i can use it as a um, reducing agent better reducing agent than car but done students so next question what write the principle involved in zone refining here also i'm saying students i have done this video clearly i'll be giving a video link for the above <coughs> zone refining but if i have to write an answer perfectly only one thing you need to write what is that impurities this is a keyword which will be there in your answer key which both both people will have that is impurities what that is what is our ultimate aim isn't it in zone refining whatever impurities are there in that particular metal we need to rem remove that so impurities where they are soluble impurities are more soluble in molten metal molten metal this is, these are the keywords means whatever impurities are there that will be more soluble in molten metal as compared to as compared to solid state okay solid state so basically whatever met in this one other impurities everything they'll con get converted in the molten they'll get means they'll be dissolved in the molten metal when we uh, burn or when we heat the metal in a strip in a particular zone that whole metal at the end it will accumulate i can cut that part and remove the impurities right students done so let's come back and see the next question what we have so this is over so let me turn the page which i have written for you all wow next question so this is your question number 29 i think 28 we have three questions three questions and three questions have 
one mark each so one two three each is given one one mark right so here they've given one this one let us read in question number 29 they've asked chlorobenzene is less soluble in water as compared to solids it's uh, chlorobenzene i think this one is little bit wrong question let us write chlorobenzene is less soluble in water as compared to uh, chloroethane i'm sorry students chloroethane change this question done now they've given me chlorobenzene is less soluble as soon as such question is given to you try to write the structure chlorobenzene okay now they have written benzene with chlorine done next is chloroethane c2h5cl so compared to both of these what is the difference here this is alkyl group here it is aryl group or the phenyl group so which is more hydrophobic we have two things one is whenever a solubility question is given to you solubility you have to think about two concepts one is hydrophilic or hydrophobic hydrophilic means water loving hydrophobic means water hating now among these two what did they say which is more which is less soluble chlorobenzene is soluble uh, less soluble they have only by themselves given this is less soluble what is the reason If only one keyword which you have to remember here is you have to write phenyl group is more hydrophobic this is the keyword which you need to write hydrophobic means it has a phobia of water hydrophobic correct why this is more hydrophobic what is the difference between this what are you observing here basically you are observing an aromatic ring correct here there are aromatic molecular orbitals the where there is overlap is there one after the other it will overlap because of this it is hydrophobic it does not there are no charges formed and it is less soluble so we shall we write this again phenyl group is more hydrophobic what is the reason due to aromatic aromatic molecular orbital if you give this your full one mark is there they'll give you this full one mark to you molecular orbital this is done students clear but in case of this yes it breaks up c2h5 means compared to this this is better it breaks up into c2h5 plus and cl minus done students right let us come back and see the next question very famous question which we have which will show sn1 reaction and why so they have given two examples what are the two examples one example which they have given is let us write both they have given c6h5 ch2cl is one example one more example which they have given us okay is c6h5 ch cl c6h5 this is the example okay did i write anything in the next page examples let me check students uh, no okay All right so here <coughs> what is this they've given me this example and they said among these two which will undergo sn1 reaction first of all for sn1 reaction what are the two things you have to remember order always remember for sn1 reaction the order is tertiary very much greater than means this, this one then secondary very much greater than primary when it is sn2 it is a reverse that is primary secondary and tertiary now let's see among these two which is primary which is secondary or which is tertiary we'll see here when i see this adjacent to the uh, uh, chloride what is present there is one ch2 group when there are two hydrogens here like this what type of carbocation it forms it forms primary carbocation now when i take this there are two alkyl groups in both the sides only one hydrogen what type of carbocation forms secondary carbocation now see the order which is the answer in both of them students here this is secondary here this is primary now compared to secondary and primary which one is first for sn1 it is secondary then then it is primary correct students so which will be the answer first secondary so this would be which will show faster reaction that is secondary one this is the secondary carbocation then comes primary order done students yes now let us come back to the next question so when i take the next question that is your 29th question c part already two questions are done isn't it so let us see now they've given us which of the following will be optically active right the first thing two compounds are given <laughs> one is two chlorobutane and one chlorobutane so for something to be optically active what is a key first important thing it should have a chiral carbon <laughs> this is the first thing so it should have chiral carbon like 
right to have the chiral carbon i think <coughs> i have done a video on chiral carbons also i've done a video on optically active compounds also please watch that i'll be giving a link video link also in the description box right so when i have to draw the first we'll see in both the structures we will draw the in both we will draw the structures and we'll see which is chiral so first one when i take two chlorobutane i'm taking two chlorobutane here let me draw the structure so carbon in the center <laughs> but so ch2 see but means three carbons isn't it right so four sorry but means four carbons so two are already done next one hydrogen one chlorine and the rarer and you have ch3 let me count one two three four perfect i have drawn two chlorobutane now because is now is this chiral carbon or not yes because all four are different groups correct right one more thing we'll draw let us draw the mirror image for this so same carbon i have the ch3 group here then i have cl exactly the mirror image hydrogen is at the back and on the top ch2 ch3 done students yes so here i have perfectly the uh, chiral carbon right so two chlorobutane it will rotate the plane polarized rate so it what it does it rotates the plane polarized rate in different directions so when it is rotating the plane polarized rate in different directions what does it give it is going to give me okay let us write that it rotates I have to impress the examiner, isn't it? So I have to perfectly give the concept. So it rotates plane polarized light. Okay. So plane polarized what giving rise to? Giving rise to two enantiomers. Two enantiomers. Enantiomers. What are then R and S configuration? R and S configuration. Done, students. I am done with this question. So, question number twenty-nine. A, B, and C options. One question they have given from solubility. That is the concept of halo alkene silurenes. One more question they picked up from SN one and SN two. That also from halo alkene silurenes. This also they picked up from halo alkene silurenes. So, in each question, you have a combination of A, B, C from the same chapter. Right. Now, <clears throat> let us come back and go with the next question. What we have? Let's see what is the next question, upcoming question. Let me turn the page and see. Right. Here they have given me beautiful question. Explain the mechanism of the following reactions. Here they have given one mechanism compulsory. As you all know, I am doing the name reaction series in that all the mechanisms are given. So this is compulsory mechanism. Like hydration of hydration will be there. D <coughs> dehydration will be there. So esterification. like that almost 60 plus name reactions with mechanisms i have done please watch the video students right so when i have to speak about the mechanism this is very interesting let me see in this book how they have given let me turn to this page of this book right 30th question very nicely they have given the mechanism i wish to show the book to you all just see students so let me zoom i think if i zoom it is it clear okay let me zoom it yes so i want to show in this particular thing how nicely they have given the mechanism i am zooming my camera so that it is visible to you all when you watch and here in this book they have clearly means the mechanism part how the carbocation is formed how it is done very nicely let me shift my camera a little bit so that it's visible to you all yes so here when i take okay one second students yes so when i see this mechanism here what did they give me first in this book the font also is clear the uh, steps also are clear now see first of all they have given me mechanism of the following in the first step let's see what did they do H sulfuric acid whatever what, what what is my aim basically i have to convert <coughs> alcohol to alkene correct ethene now in the first step sulfuric acid hydrolysis so the sulfuric acid <coughs> when it undergoes hydrolysis it's for it forms A hydronium ion as HSO4 minus. Now, you're going to take this hydronium ion. The first step step is attack of hydronium ion to ethanol. You are able to see, students. Yes, right. There is shift of this electrons, and finally it forms a carbocation here. Next, let me move the book again. Right, students. Now, suppose if it is not book is not clear, I'll be giving a video link also. No, book is not clear means I'm just saying maybe if it is a little bit blurred, I'm going to give a video link also for this. Right. So next, <coughs> just see. here there's a shift of bond and there is a cleavage forming a carbocation and hydro water 
right the same carbocation again attacks means water molecule one more water molecule attacks the same carbocation and finally this h3o plus whatever is there have seen no this h3o plus completely gets eliminated and the bond this bond drops in here this bond drops here and you get an alkene right students so what i'm trying to tell in this book clearly they have given you the mechanism they have form, formed step by step nicely they have shown what is a carbocation and clearly shown right next question what is the next question here in the next question they have given you uh, what convert the methanol means they, you have to convert methanol into an ether right students again there is a mechanism given clearly in this where first there is protonation of methanol then after that there is attack of methanol group on this finally there is attack of one more methanol in this molecule finally there is elimination of <coughs> the hydrogen and the bond shifts there forming the dimethyl ether so clearly in this book they have given the concept step by step one after the other they have given the concept they have clearly explained step by step each and every concept there is one more question here where they have given what is the reaction of hcn with aldehyde see here step by step one after the other is given in the sequence clearly they have explained how hydrogen cyanide breaks up in h plus and cn minus the double bond is shifted where cn goes and attacks this one more in the second molecule one more hydrogen cyanide attacks this molecule where oh means the min uh, the o minus because here the double bond is shifted here it's getting minus here the hydrogen of hydrogen cyanide goes and attacks oxygen forming oh and cn finally i am getting cydro cyanohydrin so here this reactions whatever link are there please when you buy this book you know clearly the mechanism is given nothing they have not skipped any question they have added one after the other one question after the other clearly explained so again i'm showing you students so in each page mechanism is given right they have also given the answer for the sequence clearly they have mentioned it so please uh, try to buy the book so that it's easy for you to have it in hand and understand right now let us come back and see i'll also be giving you video links for these watch it right now let's come back and do the next question as i told you right i've just little bit zoomed out my lens right so what was the question we did we did 29th question isn't it students right now let's come back and do the next question here they've they've given you differentiating test means but here this is also a 29th question but it is a choice question compulsory you will be getting one chemical test differentiating test what do they give me here they've given me a give one chemical test to distinguish between following compounds basically when they give the chemical test they are going to give three questions like this see here they have given between methanol and ethanol here they have given between tertiary butyl alcohol and n butyl alcohol here they have given between ethanol and propanol isopropyl alcohol means all from alcohol chapter only all the differentiating tests right it's easy students nothing you know, uh, don't get confused let us see how to solve this so whenever a chemical test given to you you have to first note down in a chapter what are the different chemical tests which we have for alcohols you have done one practical in the functional groups isn't it like that all the differentiating tests for alcohols uh, aldehydes ketones amines like that try to learn and keep it right so when i have to speak about it methanol ethanol let me make it make one tableau means uh, differentiation chart so that it is useful for any alcohol right so it methanol and ethanol so here methanol or any other alcohol ethanol or any other alcohol so basically methanol is differentiated or the chemical test which i can use for differentiating both one is acidified kmno4 test acidified kmno4 test right so here what is the main test for differentiating ido form test okay acidified kmno4 test and ido form test right so let us learn what it is so in acidified kmno test what happens you know whenever uh, kmno4 is added to methanol <coughs> what happens what is the color of kmno4 let us write purple color correct isn't it right so what will happen to this purple color purple color of kmno4 is decolorized this is the first test which you can use it decolorized means it will lose its color it will become pale next important thing what happens effervescence also occurs 
when when it is added means the chemonophore decolorization next thing is uh, whenever we add uh, lime water to this methanol what will happen a gas is released which will turn lime water milky so effervescence is also one more test so when we come to iodoform test of ethanol means okay this is clear i think students so for methanol when i add chemonophore it gets decolorized but when it comes to ethanol iodoform test is one test which i can use it for testing means uh, to confirm it is ethanol or not what do we do we take sodium hydroxide and we add iodine and then heat gently correct then what will happen a pale yellow crystal of Try iodomethanous form. What is iodoform? And again, you take so, uh, the sample, you take sodium hydroxide, you add iodine, and finally you heat it gently. When you heat it gently, what will happen? A pale yellow color crystal of what? Try iodomethanous form. What actually are the steps in iodoform? Let us write those steps. The first step in iodoform. Yes, students. Hope you remember the first test. The first test is always oxidation step. Correct, students oxidation step right what is the next step which we have we have next step is halogenation test next step what is the next step in iodoform reaction it is nothing but hydrolysis test okay hydrolysis so in oxidation step what what do we observe basically i am going to take an alcohol i said no ethanol and any other alcohol you are going to add iodine to this what do you get you get a product CH3, C three C double bond O R plus two HI. That is oxidation step, right? Just see here, oxidation step is over, <coughs> where we have removed hydrogen from here. Our addition of oxygen, removal of hydrogen. Yes. In the next halogenation step, I am going to take the same ketone again. And what am I going to do? I am going to add iodine to this. Then what do I get? I get a product. The CH3 is replaced. I get Ci3 C double bond O R. This is okay, students. Yes. After this, what is the next step? As I have written, hydrolysis is the next step. In hydrolysis, what happens? You are going to take Ci3 C double bond O R. And what are you going to do? The sodium hydroxide, whatever, whatever you are adding here. This is where is the final step, students? This is where CHI3 hydroform precipitates out. And what is out? CHI3 and the leftover compound comes out as R. C O O N A. This is what is iodoform. So you have three steps in iodoform. One is oxidation step, one is halogenation step, and one is hydrolysis step. Done, students. So this is how you are going to do the differentiating. Now, in doubt, ma'am, should I uh, get this? What do you say? Like, uh, uh, do we have to write the mechanism in the exam? Yes, the mechanism, no reaction. Basically, students, to impress an examiner, you need to be clear of what you are writing. Giving one mark or getting then one mark, you should have. Concept clarity on concepts. Done, students. Now let us see one more differentiating test which they have given. What did they give? Here they have asked tertiary write a chemical test differentiating between tertiary butyl alcohol and n butyl alcohol. Easy, very easy. Because the first test or the important test which differentiates or which we learn in alcohols is which test? Lucas test, isn't it? Right. So Lucas test is a famous test. Let us write. So whenever you are given tertiary butyl alcohol. Alcohol, primary and secondary directly you can blindly write Lucas test why because when I take a primary alcohol Lucas test what happens here primary alcohol what is Lucas reagent ZnCl2 plus HCl there is no reaction there is a first thing correct so you can differentiate next when I take secondary alcohol CH3 CHOH secondary alcohol means nothing but with two alkyl groups of one hydrogen same Lucas reagent what am I going to get I am going to get a product like this CH3 Cl CH2 CH2 done right so here when I take a tertiary alcohol tertiary alcohol means there are three alkyl groups around and you have OH so when I take a tertiary alcohol when I write the Lucas reagent wherever there is OH there is replacement of by Cl CH3 CCH3 OCH3 here Cl done here you will be getting milkiness appears with immediately this will take here there is no reaction secondary alcohol will take a little bit time but when it is tertiary alcohol immediately with 
then as soon as you add ZNCL to HCL it is going to show milkiness right so here they have given me tertiary butyl alcohol and butyl alcohol now in, in, in butyl alcohol will it give this reaction no isn't it in butyl alcohol see here we have written no reaction now here basically remember always in Lucas test one concept you have to remember the most important thing what is the order tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary this is the order always means greater means immediate reactivity is seen in tertiary what what steps are there here uh, let me take one paper let me have a uh, uh, free paper and show you the thing uh, the mechanism of this of the Lucas test now let's come back and see the mechanism of the Lucas reagent right so what happens what if we uh, come to a conclusion we said N butyl alcohol does not show reaction or reaction with the Lucas reagent tertiary <coughs> gives or forms milkiness or uh, milkiness appears in tertiary immediately as soon as you add Lucas reagent now let's see that so what are we going to write how are we going to learn just see here basically the mechanism of Lucas reagent test Lucas reagent test reagent test all right so first what is the Lucas reagent it is nothing but anhydrous in Cl3 plus HCl correct now suppose I said what is the order we said tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary now when I take tertiary let me take a tertiary alkyl group like this or one more and OH done one two three four now when ZnCl2 is introduced to this first what happens just see students <coughs> there is <coughs> the attack of ZnCl2 the tertiary alcohol so it what product does it form it's going to form R R O plus and ZnCl2 minus done students right in the second step the same compound it breaks up into tertiary carbocation it breaks up into which compound tertiary carbocation plus plus your ZnCl2 is out now this is your tertiary carbocation so this tertiary carbocation again carbocation what happens to this this is at again attacked by Cl minus right to this Cl minus goes and attacks to this particular carbocation yeah and what does it form it's going to form a compound just see R R and Cl this is where it gives the milkiness so the milkiness which forms uh, uh, immediately after adding uh, Lucas reagent is because of the formation of this so this is the mechanism of Lucas test students hope it is clear to you all right now next question let us see this is over now what is the answer among tertiary butyl alcohol and butyl alcohol which will give so tertiary butyl alcohol we can differentiate using Lucas test done let us see the next question they have given give a chemical test to differentiate between ethanol and isopropyl alcohol simplest test I'll give you students when I have to take ethanol what is the formula ethanol I can differentiate using test with metals so I can I'll write the answer first ethanol reacts with sodium metal sodium metal what does it give when, when it reacts with metal sodium metal releasing out which gas releasing out hydrogen gas correct students hydrogen gas so let us write the reaction but but isopropyl alcohol does not isopropyl alcohol does not remember this does not right students so let us write C2H5OH gives what it breaks here and forms sodium ethoxide what is the gas released hydrogen gas so this is the best differentiating test which you can give for ethanol and isopropyl alcohol that means in this particular question question number uh, 20, 30 they have given chemical test compulsory chemical test would be there I have done a series of chemical tests differentiating test and kept in the playlist you can watch I did for differentiating test for alcohols you know, aldehydes ketones amines right students so your 30th question is the differentiating test done let us come back and see the next question what is the next question which chapter let us turn the page and see all right so here they have given what did they give us uh, this is a chapter from your uh, 
solute electrochemistry right perfect so electrochemistry chapter is given here earlier they've given organic let's see what question they put define limiting molar conductivity question number a, that is a part in 31 question number b the, the b part is state cold rush law then they've given define corrosion so basically students i have done all these three videos perfectly i have done i'll be giving the video link also i'll be mentioning the question number i'll also be mentioning the video link also so i'll be mentioning like this in the video question 31 and i'll be mentioning the link youtube link which i've given right students next let us come back and see the 32nd question what is given to us so in 32nd question right what did they give me how do you account for the following compulsory reasoning questions are there i did one video where i explain reasoning questions of p block reasoning questions of uh, means like that right so when i have to speak read the 32nd question let's see what is given here they asked how do you account for the following what did they give me they've asked me the transition metals how do you account for the following transition metals exhibit variable oxidation state now what is the concept here when something is exhibiting variable oxidation state first keyword you have to mention here in the uh, this one is incomplete d or incomplete orbital electronic configuration what is what you have tried this is a keyword which you have tried what you should write due to incomplete orbital configuration orbital electronic configuration orbital electronic configuration okay now what are we speaking about we are speaking about transition metals what are the different transition metals you have means uh, basically nickel manganese chromium all these are cobalt all these are uh, sorry nickel yeah nickel well, that is also transition metal only then gold silver all these are present in the p block in between now i have written incomplete electronic configuration now what what if it is incomplete what happens yes important thing here is you have you need to write the there is small energy difference okay small energy difference between what small energy difference between n minus 1 d and ns orbital ns orbital this is where is the keyword so here because of the small difference what happens it shows variable oxidation state what what it is showing for example in transition elements the stable oxidation state is which one plus three if i take manganese just see plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven so many oxidation states is going to show if it is chromium plus three plus four plus five plus six suppose if i have to take the range what range it shows it shows a range of plus 1 2 plus 8 and plus 9 also but there is one zero oxidation state which one it is nickel shows zero oxidation state which compound when it forms a compound that is nickel tetracarbonyl so in this compound the valency of this or the oxidation state is zero but otherwise all the transition elements the range is between plus 1 to plus 9 why because of incomplete they can be transition isn't it the energy gap is very less when the energy gap is very less it can easily jump from uh, <coughs> the lower to the higher yes so energy levels it can easily jump and it shows so many oxidation states done students yes now let us come back and do the next question now they have given zirconium as well as hafnium zirconium atomic number they have given z is equal to 40 hafnium 72 have almost identical radii right so whenever we have such questions zirconium hafnium lanthanum you know all these are which elements they're nothing but lanthanide elements a block element correct so here this whenever you see one only keyword you need to write what is that lanthanide contraction why they have identical radii because of the concept called lanthanide contraction right so this lanthanide contraction beautiful video i have done on this i'll give you the video link also but in the exam if you find any question based on atomic radii you can write one keyword that is lanthanide contraction done students so i'll be giving the video link also to this watch that so i'll be writing that i'll be giving video link very beautiful uh, question i've explained taking different sectors now when i take the next question let us turn the page and see yes here they've given transition metal and their compounds act as complexing agent oh wow what is actually is complexing agent let's see first 
first of all when i have to speak about complexing agent first thing let us write the definition and see okay i have to write the answer now i have to know what is complexing agent nothing student simple it's basically a compound what happens in this which exist means a compound in which independently the molecules or the ions so what are the molecules or the ions of non metal if shall i write that first let us write so complexing agent is what a compound in which in which independently independently existing molecules or ions of which one of a non metal of a non metal forms what does it form it's going to form coordination bonds we very well know isn't it we have studied a chapter called coordination compounds also so you can watch the video coordination compounds chapter i have done coordination bonds where they can form coordinate covalent bonds coordination bonds with this is most important with a metal atom metal atom or ion this is what is important so here what happens in the complexing agent <coughs> whatever molecules of a non metal they're going to form a bond which type of bond they're going to form a coordinate covalent bond with which one with a metal atom or an ion so this is complexing now let us come back to the question they have asked us transition metals and their compounds act as complexing agent right why why are they acting as complexing agent first important thing is in transition metals they are acting because they have vacant d orbitals this is the first keyword you have to write I told you know the energy gap is very less and they move up and oxidation state increases in the same way because of this vacant d orbital what will happen uh, it can easily form the complex yes this metal atom is your transition metal atom it can easily because of this vacant the when non metal comes in forms a coordinate bond it can easily form a complexing compound means a complexing agent will come and form a bond and it sh shows means Uh, because of this vacant orbital it can easily bond form a form uh, a bond and with non metal and thus act as complexing agent am i clear again because of the vacant d orbital yes the transition metals they form a coordinate covalent bond with the uh, mm, so non metals perfect and and form perfectly form a complexing agent one more concept is they have high charge density high charge density on which one on metal ion high charge density on metal ion this is the two important keywords which you have to write for transition metals right students am i clear yes let's come back to the next 30 second question let me take out yes this is again an or question in the same 30 second there is an or question right students now look here for this or question which is from d block here what did they do they have given a question for the p block and d block uh, choice right so here in d block i'm perfectly <coughs> i have done these videos i'll be giving a video link also for the students i did a video on this video link i'm writing here i'll be giving a video link for this uh, listen this also i have done i'll be giving a video link i'll be giving the whole video link for the d block all are there in that student right let me come back and turn the page and see oh wow this also i did here also i'm writing i'll be giving a video link below i'll mention the question number for example here this is an or question i'll be mentioning question number 32 like this and give the video link for that students right right let's come back and do the 33rd question what do they give me in 33rd question this is again a c section c question let's see here they have given give the structures of a b and c right so simple so whenever pcl5 is given or pcl3 is given this is where your concentration should go when this compound which compound is this this is an alcohol because of oh group which type of alcohol is this this is nothing but secondary alcohol because there is only one hydrogen so when i have to write the answer just see ch3 copy it ch ch3 and oh so pcl5 when it acts what do you get where is the replacement replacement is this part so here you're going to get a compound ch3 ch ch3 
CH3Cl. So you have to take a pencil or this one and write mark it as A because A is this. This on further treating with which one they have treated with AGCN. Right, and we very well know <coughs> AGCN, what type of product it gives. AGCN is present compulsory, it's going to give an isocyanide, correct? Isocyanide, correct? So, here <coughs> when you treat, there is a cleavage of the bond here. Cl is replaced by Cn, you get CH, CH, NC, isocyanide, and CH3. What is this compound? This is nothing but compound B. Next, what do they do? They have treated this compound with a reducing agent H2 and hydrogen nickel. So, whenever there is a metal, reducing agent isn't it? So, what will happen? There is an hydrogen added at this particular point. There is a hydrogen added at this particular point. We are going to add reducing agent, nothing but the addition of hydrogen, isn't it? So, what will happen? Your CH3, CH, N. So NH and CH3, you have observed students, there is a cleavage of the bond, one hydrogen is added here, two more are, uh, three more are added here, so CH3, this is the compound, so compound C, so you have to more concentrate more on the reagents which are present, so when it is P PCL5, there is a replacement of OH by Cl-, minus. when there is AGCN, there is a formation of isocyanide, when there is hydrogen nickel, there is addition of metal, if there is a metal, there is addition of hydrogen. What is the name of this compound? This is nothing but 2 chloro, 3 carbons are there, propane. 2 chloro propane. What is this compound? This compound is nothing but this is, uh, yes, I, can I write it as iso, okay, butyl isocyanide? Butyl isocyanide, 1, 2, 3, yes, carbon also is there, butyl isocyanide. Here, uh, this is what? Propane, 1, 2, 3, okay. Uh, N methyl, yes. Now this is N methyl, N methyl, propane, 2 amine. N methyl, propane, 2 amine. Correct? 2 chloropropane, butyl isocyanide, N methyl, 2, N, uh, N methyl, propane, 2 amine. That's, that's done, students. Yes, hope this is clear. Right. Now let us come back and see the next question. In 33 only, what is the next question given? Oh, wow. This is addition of ozone. I did one video also. Addition of ozone, how to do. Here I am directly writing the product. <coughs> Here after ozone, there is hydrolysis also. I am directly writing the answer for you all. So you, I think, yeah, I'll try to share the link also here. How I added ozone with the mechanism. Right, students, here. So I want, they wanted product A. So B and C. Okay, there is one more, one product here. Let me write. Here the product is benzoquinone. The product B is OH Hydrogen O Right C compound is Okay uh, I am directly writing here students I think uh, Don't get confused I will be writing I will be giving you the link also for this Please watch that video. Uh, did I write it wrong like this? Okay, this is, I'm sorry. The benzene ring is given like this. I'm writing the B compound again. B, I'm sorry, I have not mentioned it clearly. I'll mention it here. OH, H, yes students. So here uh, <clears throat> I think the concept of this is I'll, as I told you I'll be mentioning it here in the video link right let's come back and do the next question the questions are getting you know a little bit little bit uh, when I go to the next section section D when I go you'll be having five questions in that not a problem so no it's easy student actually don't get confused don't get panic go through all the videos chapter wise everything is fine now when i have to come back to the 34th question here we have what we have polymer chapter right so easiest chapter which we have it in chemistry what do they give or the whole chemistry polymers i feel polymer molecules chapter also is very easy this compulsory question of polymers forming monomers and from forming poly monomers from polymers is very important i'm writing here always from polymer chapter 
from polymers they'll be asking you to write the monomers monomer of the polymer compulsory monomer one monomer two compulsory now what do they give me buna n they've given me let us write so for buna n first thing you need to know the structure of buna n correct buna n structure what is buna n basically they are asking us to write monomers in the exam how should you write first try to take this buna n okay let us write the compound in the exam you need to write like this butadiene 1 3 butadiene no buna n means ch buna is 1 3 butadiene with n is the cyanide group which we have this is butadiene correct right this breaks up into two monomers so you will write this is polymer and what are the two monomers you will break right so here as i told you i think a little bit the video got deleted now again let me start this is bun um, buna n compound when i break cleave this i'll be going to get two monomers one is one three butadiene and one more is this compound with a cyano group right acrylonitrile so here for the polymer i need to write two monomers so that i need to means clearly know the structure now let us write for the next two one nylon 26 okay so nylon 26 for this i need to know the structure let us write the nylon 26 structure nh ch2 co nh ch2 taken six times c double bond o and n this is nylon 26 this is a polymer when i have to write the monomers monomer <coughs> of this one the first monomer is cleave the bond right so when you cleave the bond as i said hydrolysis one h and oh will be adding here h and oh again h and oh so when you cleave the bond exactly here correct h and oh what do you get this will become nh2 n ch2 co oh next monomer which we have for nylon 26 is as i told the other half will be there which will be cleaved that is n h2n n h2 i have both the sides you can write and ch2 taken five times coh right students right so what is the name of this compound this is nothing but ethylene glycol and this is terephthalic acid correct students uh, it, it, no once again ethylene okay yeah so nh2 see ethylene glycol is it right no no i have to 